mislead you about who they were. <clears throat> we discovered the Centauri's through Joe's vision of who they were. You know, he, he got the idea about the hair and yeah, and, 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 and you know how they dressed and what they did. But I, mean, I look over the history occasionally and think uh, oh, this is way too deep. You know, <laughs> all, all we're trying to do is the scene each day. You know. So. <laughs> Yeah. It was very heavy, yeah. you know? And it was so funny because um, the material I saw, thought looked so familiar to me. You know, wow. so, you know, I've seen this before, and I, I went to her and I said, where does the material come from? I mean, is it, is it a popular material? She goes, well, it's, it's hotel fat. <laughs> and I think wow. I stayed in the room with that. <laughs> She was, she was from the theater, so she, it was all really theatrical stuff. All the costumes were, were great that right. way. But that, that leads you down the road. Did you get, uh, you mentioned the costumes, did you guys get to take anything back and souvenirs after the show? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I can pull up. So you hold on to that. He comes prepared. I know I'm going to get this question. I, I, when, I, when, I, when the series was over, uh, uh, you, can, you can tell I'm a little bitter. Um, when the series was over, I wanted to keep something from, from Londo's quarter, you know, I've done the character for him. And so I asked if I could have one of the little statues that were in Londo's quarters. You know, a little gold statue about that big that had a little, you know, crack. Yeah. And uh, I, I asked, and they said, um, you know, we'll have to write to, you'll have to write a letter to Warner Brothers. I'm sorry, you know, and you have to do it in triple fifth or something like that, something silly. So I wrote a long letter and said, you know, I really like something. And, I, and they came back and they rejected it. said, no, you can't. Can you believe that? No, no. No. And, and uh, you know, I always thought that was everything. And of course, everybody said, just steal it, Peter. Just steal it. And of course, I did steal it. <laughs> However, somebody else, a fan sent me, these were, the, <laughs> these were the auctions that Warner Brothers did of all the stuff from, from uh, Babylon 5. And I don't know whether you even were aware that everything was auctioned off. And this is, so, uh, if you wanted a uh, Babylon 5 Centauri bomb prop, it sold on June 11th for $911. If you wanted to buy Londo's full costume, you could get it for the low, low price of $7,000. This is why they didn't want me to take the, the Bravari bottle. Oh. Eight hundred and ten dollars. So all it was was a bottle that they stuck a label on. Yeah. The, the little Londo prop doll sold for one thousand twenty-five dollars. Without that, I, I have a statue. Anyway. I just thought that was interesting. Somebody gave me all of these, and everything sold. I, won't, I should find some beer stuff, or, you know, here. Uh, Jakar's costume sold for two thousand five hundred. Beer sold for more than I know. I, I used to tell Andre I so. <laughs> I, I love to piss off the nuns. <laughs> it was such an enjoyable thing for me to tell this with Andre. <laughs> oh, here's beer. Here's, here's, here's costume. Oh. They made it into a bed spring. <laughs> <laughs> Veer's book. $1,026. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I mean, really, bro. So, did I get any, anything? Yes, I did. I stole it. <laughs> yes. The scene in the middle of the third season where. Uh, the lady Burrell has given you the prophecy that one of you will be emperor after we get her. And yeah. you have this great scene, just the two of you together, and have a very ad lib kind of feel to it. Was it scripted or did it just tell you about it? That's what we were saying was one of our favorite scenes, the scenes where we knew one of us was going to be emperor. We, yeah, you know what, we improv that a little bit. I mean, it, it was about uh, how we were reacting to each yeah, other. And the books are improv. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was about being suspicious and just showing that. You know, so much is often about Yeah, there's the very much after you, no, after you. We had fun in that scene, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Some of my favorite Londo moments are in the telemovie in the beginning, both when you're on Earth in the younger days and, of course, older as the Emperor. 
Was well, working on the telemovies like in the beginning different? Did it feel different than on the, the episodes? Well, it certainly was, and as I said, you know, that I thought it was just going to be a little TV movie, and so uh, I, I, constantly, I thought about the character in a different way. I thought it was like a one-shot deal, and what I always say really attracted me to the character, what I liked, was where Joe positioned him when you first met him. Um, when, when you first meet Londo, he is such, he is in such a corner in his life, you know, he's backed right into a corner. He's at the point of, I'm going to either... Uh, kill myself on alcohol or blow my brains out or just die from depression and you know everybody in life That's what's great is that we all understand and know what it feels like when you're in a corner in life And so I love that about the character and you know that stuff about it And I want the script to read some of it because uh, it was the, my favorite part about the same part of where they were all that bitterness it was such a great thing to play, you know, it really was to be that uh, bitter and that unhappy, you've got just places to go. You're either going to die or you're going to get out of that hole. And so, I, I, I mean, I love that. So, 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 it was very much different. And then when we launched into the first season, as I said, we were a little bit at sea, all of us, trying, you know, where are we going, who are these people, and what are they going to do? Will you indulge me to read? You can talk about it. Can I read a little bit from that pilot? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'll keep it there. I'll do it quickly. Okay. When Steve wants me to go fast, he goes like this. Can you question for me while he's preparing? <laughs> yeah. It's, it, actually, it's kind of, it's kind of one for both of you. I've always imagined it had to be a weird feeling. You know, remember the first time you were out in public, like, you know, either by yourself or with your family, and saw an action figure of a character that you play? Yeah. You know, uh. uh it's funny, it was, it was actually thrilling, you know. Uh, one of my biggest career moments, you know, was I became a Happy Meal. <laughs> I, was, uh, I did a cartoon series called Buzz Lightyear of the Star King. And, uh, I was Booster and my Happy Meal came out. <laughs> and I went up and I, and I brought like 10 Happy Meals. <laughs> Which was quite embarrassing for a 300 pound man. Now, if that isn't the quote from this panel, I became a Happy Meal, I don't know. That's, that's the one they want to take off. But you know, as high as you get with the toys, you know your career's on the down low, you know, when, when you go to Toys R Us and you're on the clearance range. Yeah. They don't really look like us, I said. They don't really look like us. Oh no, you want it? They're for you. Oh, yes. 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 Yes.
it's a big universe. If I knew who did it, I would tell you. I'm not here to make a job. Do you know why I am here? I'm here to prostrate myself to your wonderful Earth Alliance in the hopes of attaching ourselves to your destiny like, like uh, one of those fish on the world that attach themselves to sharks. Barboras? Yes. You make very good sharks, Mr. Garibaldi. We were pretty good sharks ourselves once, but somewhere along the way we forgot how to bite. There was a time when this whole quad belonged to us. And now where are we? Twelve universes and a thousand monuments to past glories, living off memories, stories, selling trinkets. My God, man, we've become a tourist attraction. See the great Sentai Republic, open nine to five. First time. <laughs> <laughs> My wife called me, I came in right after I read that and said, yes, I'm on you. <laughs> See you in a minute. And I'll do mine, my favorite speech. Yes, Londo, right away. <laughs> When they killed it off like that, and they just wrapped that thing up so quickly. Does that disappoint you as much as it disappointed me? I mean, that was horrible. I was just... You know what, I really, uh, I, 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 you know, I'm, I try to be an actor uh, that just follows the, uh, so, you know, I, I, I really, I was surprised by, by stuff Joe did, and, um, but I always uh, realized that, you know, uh, I'm, it he, he's like the boss. I mean, it just felt like they were rushing to the end of the series, and, and they just never covered it. I mean, it was just... A throwaway line at the end of the show. You know, there was a lot of rushing. We didn't know whether we were going to go on, so he would he would have truncated short and stuff, and then finish it, and then restart it, and all there was there was all that, and I understood that was going on too. So you know, and if you read his comic book arts, that I mean, you know, they're magnificent. They? And and I can only think that why you had in mind for that, but would have been too. You know, so. Almost brings it to you. <laughs> I'm a good little actor, right? I just do what I, you know. I told you. I want to work, you know? I want to work. Actually, kind of two questions. One, one off the bat with the, uh, the way the series ended, I'm wondering if you all <coughs> read like the, the Atari trilogy afterwards. I know it's curious, like, whatever. I, I didn't. I, you know, I'm not a reader of. I would, it's interesting. Again, on the walk in here, I was telling. We were talking about the movie Her that came out, and, and I read. I had a little science fiction book that I had in college that I liked. But I, I'm not much of a reader of science fiction, so no, I never been interested. In, and in, uh, you know, as I told you, I didn't even really look at the world. I had enough going on in my life. That I wasn't that interested about one of the centaurs. But I mean, I spent a lot of time with the centaur. I wore the wig a lot. You know? <laughs> Outside of that, I was not really very interested. I think kind of the second question is for Steve. The um, episodes you directed in Babylon 5 were <coughs> very different than the rest of them, kind of structurally. It wasn't just a straightforward story. There was always some kind of manipulation with images or the way the story was told. Did you pursue going after those? Or, you know, were you just, how did you end up with those that were kind of so outside of what the normal Well, I pursued them uh, because uh, I guess you could call this pursuing. I, I just went to Joe and I said, please let me direct. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, those were things given to me. I, now I, I shot them differently than the normal. Uh, and I could have that liberty, if you're, if you're uh, guesting as a director on a show, you, you got to really follow the straight and narrow path. But because it was an actor on the show, and I had a little bit more leeway, so I chose to do my episode a little bit differently, you know? Um, so that's like question. any good director, you know, God, you have your own style, and he had his own style as a director with all of us. You know, he directed, he felt very different than the people we had. So, and then he chose him to both. Yeah. 
we in the back? Yeah. As actors, you already said you love your characters, but uh, are there any characters on the show that you saw being portrayed? You said, I'd like to try that. Any of the other characters being together? I'd like to give that one a shot. <laughs> you got a joke already, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I actually told, I, I love the idea because I, I, I had done some, you know, theater and stuff and I, and the repertory, that I love the idea of, I told Joe, we should switch up roles, it'll be great for me to play a Narn. I always thought it'd be fun, to, you know, but you know, Joe was not into that. I, I thought it would be great to be a Narn, so. That I don't think there was anybody else I really thought, I didn't want to be a big bar, God. It's <laughs> <laughs> so serious, aren't they? <laughs> I never thought about being anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yes? What was it like working with uh, the Eternal Rosemary? I liked Rachel. She was great. You know, she was, everybody sort of bowed down when she came on. I didn't see, uh, you know, the, very much a Star Trek, and so I wasn't a big Rosemary fan anyway, but and I did, was she on this? Did she act also in it? In there? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, but I said like, <laughs> kill him. Yeah, I mean, well, you know she acted. Yeah, we know she acted. I didn't well, know she was in Star Trek. Did she also act? Oh, 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 yeah. 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 She's the only person that's been in half the Star Trek series. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. It was great. It was like being with the Queen somehow. Everybody was like, you know, very, very river control and, and sweet to her. It was interesting. And she she was playing that kind of a part, right? She was a, one of the telepaths kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the Centauri women are having telepathic. It makes it very difficult for us, man. <laughs> 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 I hate it. A lot of these stuff. <laughs> anyway, she was always fun. She kind of fit the character. Do you have memories of this? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. I had a couple of scenes with her, you know. That, that was it. <laughs> um, question for both of you, but just slightly uh, different. For Peter, uh, was there ever uh, a role as an actor that you saw somebody else do? Uh, at any movie you play, you said, man, I wish I could have you know, done that. I, I would have had fun with it. The same thing for, uh, for Peter as far as directing. Is there like a movie that you come out with where you said, wow, you know, I wish I could put my twist on that. Like, that would have been fun to do. You must Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, the constant thing about being an independent filmmaker like myself, you know, you're always searching to get your films financed, you know. So I would, I would love to be at a point where, you know, and I think actors are the same way, is which, which one am I going to do next? Which script do I want to do next? As opposed to, I love this script, I got to go out and try to raise the money for it, you know. And that, that's, that's more difficult than making the movie, you know. Um, because um, I, I, I don't act anymore. You call you did acting? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we rehearsed. We rehearsed that, and he made me do that. <laughs> and I didn't do it right. Did I make a mistake? Did I did I mess the line up? No, you can tell me. <laughs> one time, just in talk to, you know, he said that one time. I said, somebody said, "What are you, what are you guys, what are you doing next?" And I said, "Well, I don't act anymore." And he said, "Come, what you doing acting?" <laughs> it was funny at the time. <laughs> every time we do a panel together, whatever I see, you know, time goes by. I'm happy to see him. He puts that pressure on me every time. Do you that line, huh? You want to rehearse it? <laughs> but as a director, it's funny because now I. I, I love to get to go to a movie and get so lost in the movie that I'm not looking at shots and stuff. Right. But um, and that's not necessarily bad. There was I can't even remember. I recently saw a movie. It, it, it may have been Twelve Years a Slave, but there was a shot on a ship. It started interior on the ship and it pushed out past the the the, water, the paddle wheel thing. And past that, and I'm, I'm still to this day trying to figure out how did they do that shot to go past the water wheel. I'm sure it's some kind of CGI or something, but um, I always love shots like that. I still, there's one shot I do in almost every movie I directed, I call it the Hitchcock shot, and, and it's basically you, you push the camera in really fast, and you pull out the lens. Yeah. Yeah. 
And, and it, it's, it's that Roy Scheider uh, shot in Jaws. Where, oh, yeah. it's, it's such a great shot. I, I steal it all the time. <laughs> as far as you know, I, I, you know, that's not what I said in the panel about being lucky. And I really, that is really true. I'm a really lucky person in life. I have good luck and I've always had good luck. And so in terms of acting, you know, I had, I've, I've played a lot of really good, interesting characters. I, mean, I got Mondo and I got the guy on Hill Street. It was a great character. And I've held a ton of good characters. I've played a lot of lawyers and straight people and stuff like that. So there's nothing I dream about, like, oh, God, I wish I could. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because, you know, I love it because I'm always playing maybe the nice guy or the innocent guy. And, like I did a movie called Midnight Madness you know, uh, for Disney, and uh, I got to beat up Michael J. Fox. <laughs> 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 so, you know, I was like a, a bad guy. And, you know, to this day, I, I feel so bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I may have caused this. You know, this oh, uh, you brought all the part of this yeah. They say that. Yeah, they get <laughs> I just want to say that you say you haven't watched any of the episodes. We went home last night and watched the two of you kill the emperor. Uh, what you did there, you can call it acting. <laughs> I'm going to get around to it. I, if, if you did the time to watch one, that that would have to be close to the top of the list. You guys were both just awesome. Uh, and that actor was so good. Uh, was Wilford Kremlin? Was he getting Wolf, Wolf, Kremer. Yeah, Kremer. Kremer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's such a good actor. I saw, I saw uh, Joe's notes about writing that scene, and he said, you know, the whole time Wanda was going to kill him, and then it just popped him in his head, no. Yeah. I, 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 I'm here's here. I want to do it. <laughs> and you guys just pulled it off really easy. I did it. What? Oh, okay. I think you were trying to pick the lock. But you see, that's great writing, you know, Wanda, that's so human, right? That he thinks good. You know, that, let him do my dirty work. <laughs> but I mean, really, you know? I mean, it's a great thing. That's a great piece of writing, I think. Anybody else? Any uh, is there any, uh, like, quirks or anything that y'all developed for the show? Any characters that you continue to use after the show? Do quirks. Or any, any, any quirks did you develop after the show? <laughs> It's a great setup for him. He's going to do some comedy on that. Quirks. Quirks and manners. You know, little things that you don't know. There is some, but unfortunately, I, I'm directing at the time and it doesn't come in here. So. <laughs> I'll go to the script supervisors and go, Do you think this shot's okay? <laughs> You know, I, I tell you, one of the times I was most pissed off as a director, we had a script supervisor that I did not get along with, and um, and I do this shot, and I said, okay, we can move on to the next scene now, and she turns to me and she says, this this scene is, I think it's our word, but this scene is screaming for a two shot. She's telling me what shots to do. I said, okay, when you direct yours, put the two shot, you know? Uh, you know. One thing I hate, I don't like script supervisors mostly. Yeah, you know, I don't like. I, you know, um, again, I guess I, I wanted to get away from the uh, more than I wanted to, you know. But it's always interesting to me how some people say to me when they meet me, oh, you're just like Mondo. You, you know, my wife said, oh, typecasting. <laughs> my real wife said that. Like, oh, that's you. And, and other people say, oh, no, you don't think. Wow, I met you. you know, so that's always interesting to me that I don't, I don't feel like I carry. It. To me, it was a complete character, and you know, had his own walk and talked to. Me. So I can't imagine that people think. I'm, but I was in with Barbara. We were coming back from from a trip in, in Italy, and we were in the uh, airport in Venice, right? And I'm carrying like a cheese and a salami, and, and my arm is different. like food. So and I'm, I'm completely, you know, we're dragged out. We're dragging. To the airport because we're tired and we're the end of our, our you know whatever vacation we're going on. And I'm walking to the airport and and I have sunglasses on and I'm busy. And some guy, as I walk by, says, uh, "Good afternoon, <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, "What? How could this guy think that? I, I mean, how did he know?" <laughs> I was not like, no, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. 
that is my fault. But you can know how many years have you been there? 24 years. 24 yeah. years. You know, uh, last last night the, the the last question was a great one of, of the crew, and, and many people talked about being grateful. And I, I just wanted to, to speak for myself, and probably for all of us here before time runs out, is that we are so grateful you guys take the time and do this. We really enjoy it. Thank you very much. I love these actors who strive to become famous or, or well known, and then they say, I can't stand the crowds. You know, then what, why did you enter this business? You know, <laughs> it, it comes along with the territory. It's like an athlete you know, uh, getting hurt. He goes, I, I hate being hurt. Well, you, you're an athlete, you, know, you get hurt. But we appreciate you guys so much because without, you know, we'd be doing this, like I said, with my mother in the <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing that, and, and, and I gotta tell you, there's something special um, about the sci fi fans. Because what I love about sci fi conventions uh, is you can come to a sci fi con convention and you're not gonna be made fun of because you might be at another convention. So, you go to a medical convention and you're dressed up as a centauri? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, all, all I wanted to say is that I, again, I came from a theater background originally, and after the, you finished the performance in the theater, you, you know, very often people would be outside and you would meet them or, you know, you'd run into the audience. The thing about television work and film work is you never see your audience, you know? We would work out in Sun Valley out there and do uh, you know, the show, and this opportunity to actually engage you people and for people to say, yeah, it was good, or that worked, or that made us laugh, or I felt that, it's really worked so much, it's so great, so it really is mutual, it goes the other way, it, it's an acknowledgement of our work, you know, we didn't know, we're just doing it, you know, and, and it goes out. It's amazing, and this is, God's honest truth, it's amazing, like we said, we don't know if it works or not, <laughs> it's amazing the uniform comments we get on, like, on certain lines, like, you know, people go to Peter and say, I love this line, and so many at the same line, and you know, so many people come and say, I love the way, or I love when you had the bar statement, uh, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. my name. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's funny how we do get feedback. You know? It's great, gratifying, and it makes your life, it lets you make your work, your, your work feel like it's really worth something. So as you get older, it really means something. It's a long time ago, but it's still, you know, it's gratifying. Thank you. I guess it's not a question. I'm just going on to that. I'm, I'm a new fan. Okay. I'm here because of my husband, and uh, he made me he made him watch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much.